Fourth set. Blair Thompson leaves it inside to McLean. McLean leaning into traffic, cannot get the roll. And there is Caden Pierce with his first rebound. He had 10 in the win against Dartmouth on Monday. Pierce, straightaway jumper. And Thompson there for the rebound. Thompson trying to cash in on the other end and does so successfully as Columbia ties the game at two. Nice job by the Lions so far on two possessions, trying to get high percentage shots inside. There's a Columbia team averaging just under 81 points per game, but their defense can't stop Kanan Pierce inside as he's going to work early. Well, that's where Princeton's really dangerous. They can beat you both inside and outside. They're showing right now the ability to play strong and play to their strengths. Tigers hustling out on the perimeter. They go inside to Kenny Nolan. He loses the ball, and guess who's in the mix? It's Caden Pierce. So Pierce doing a lot of the heavy lifting early, and then back on the other end, Blake Peters spots up for a trifecta as Princeton has jumped out to a five-point lead. Well, that's his game right there. He's a great catch-and-shoot player. So is Blair Thompson as he cuts the deficit to two. Didn't take long for the Lions to push that ball up court in transition, find an open man for a good shot. So Thompson has all five of Columbia's points. He has scored in single digits the last two games, only has taken four shots in each contest. Peters off the mark on that three. Odenow with a rebound, and Columbia looking to push. I came into practice yesterday, and who did I bump into walking in? Blair Thompson. I said, how you doing? He said, I'm ready to play. Well, he has shown that thus far in the early minutes. That one overshot. And it's the last touch by Avery Brown. It will head back to the Tigers. Princeton receiving votes in both the AP and the USA Today coaches poll. First time that's happened since 1997-98. And this is a team piggybacking off of a very strong performance in the NCAA tournament last season. If this ball deflected out of play, it will stay with the Tigers. Well, that was a historic season for them, Lance. Making it to the Sweet 16, taking out, what, a two seed? Arizona. And then they beat Missouri. Columbia trying to turn defense into offense. No win the double clutch. Denied by Lee. And Lee quickly back the other way. You know, you think of Lee as such a great offensive player, but he showed you some nice defense there as well. Pierce slicing down the lane. And you can count that bucket plus the foul as Caden Pierce is having his way at the expense of this Columbia D. Well, that was a real strong take right there and a nice finish. Very smart to use the glass and the When you look at that nice pass back, he sees that he has some real estate to get all the way to the rim. He took the contact well and he stayed in the play. Well, Pierce has great length at 6'7". And he can handle like a guard. Last year's Ivy Rookie of the Year. He set the Princeton rookie record for rebounds with 232. And he has not missed a beat here in the early stages of Ivy League play. Zito Bedry in for the first time, loses the ball, and it's Peters that takes it away. Lee, the step back three. Long rebound goes to Nolan. And the Lions will settle down here in the half court set. McLean off the dribble with the left hand. He gets it in off the glass. And Columbia is within three. Well, you like the aggressive mentality right now of Columbia offensively. Both teams shooting 50% or better, and we're going to have contact underneath. As Kenny Noland was trailing on the play, he's going to pick up the personal. Lance, it's cold outside, but it's hot inside this gym. Both of these teams high intensity to start this contest. As Princeton will have 20 to work with on the shot clock. Saturday afternoon, New York City. Where else would you rather be? Well, it doesn't get better than this, Barry. 
Had a great turnout here inside Levy and Gymnasium. Lee off the handoff, took one too many steps. And off the travel, that'll give it back to Columbia. Princeton with the fewest turnovers per game in the Ivy League at nine. And they already have two in this one. Well, that's part of their secret sauce to winning. Lance, they don't beat themselves. Very well disciplined. Brown trying to create space out to Thompson, blocked by Lee. He does it all. Lee going coast to coast, and he's denied by Blair Thompson. That is what you call a taste of your own medicine. And they are jumping through the roof here inside Levy and Gymnasium. Lee goes sky high with one block, and then... But what they've shown defensively so far is another side to their game, and that's the reason why they're winning. Lance, you've got to like the way both of these teams have come to play today. We have a terrific crowd here. They're going to be treated to a good one. Tigers basketball here out of the timeout. The spin move and the finish with ease underneath for Matt Alaco, the senior out of Ohio, known for his three-point shooting, coming off a career-high 25-point performance in the win over Dartmouth on Monday. Jake Tavroff in for the first time for Columbia. He's an excellent passer for the man of his size as Brown cuts to the rim, cannot get the bounce, and Jack Scott is there for the rebound. Columbia shooting three of eight from the field. Princeton in comparison, five of nine. Pierce working on Tavroff. Spins, sealed off, leans in, and Tavroff wins that battle. Tavrov, the good job right there, walling up, keeping his hands up high, being a distraction on that shot. We have yet to see Geronimo Rubio De La Rosa in this game as Jaden Cooper's in out of the backcourt, and he fools Scott and lays it in underneath. Well, Cooper does a good job attacking. Nice move bringing him in the game, energy player. And, and they he... have needed those guys to well... deliver. Backdoor cut by Lee, and he scoops it home with McLean trailing. Well, that was precision Princeton offense right there. Sharp cut, good pass, nice spacing on the floor. Brown kicks it out to McLean. They'll continue to play catcher with 10 on the shot clock. Thompson has gone and off to a great start. Cannot get it to go that way, and here comes Lee, sealed off by Brown. Dangerous pass intercepted by Thompson. That's turnover number three for the Tigers. Lions looking to make him pay. Well, you like the fact that Thompson didn't stop on that play. He, in transition defense, he came back, got the steal. And one turnover leads to another. Tavrov tried to thread the needle. Pierce, strong, up and in with the right hand as Caden Pierce has seven of his team's 16. Well, Pierce showing no fear of attacking the rim. And Pierce has scored in double figures the last three games entering all double doubles. He needs three more points to perhaps continue that theme and the turnovers continue to pile for Columbia. That's number four in the second charge against Tavroff as we'll have some changes on both sides of the equation here. We take a look at the ball movement by the Tigers, Barry. When you see the way they just hold the ball and wait to see what the defense is giving them, they set everyone up. They looked outside for a nice, sharp, hard cut inside. Dalen Davis in for the first time for the Tigers. The freshman out of Chicago, Illinois. Gives them another ball handler, as well as Jacob Huggins. Another freshman out of Oak Park, California. And Noland is going to pick up his second personal. And that's number three against Columbia. Well, this is where the Lions have to be careful. Offensively with turnovers, defensively with fouls. And Geronimo Rubio De La Rosa has just walked towards the scorer's table as Pierce kicks it out to Davis. Sealed off by Cooper. Six on the shot clock for the Tigers. Muscling his way inside is Scott. That's a travel and turnover number four as Rubio De La Rosa in for the first time in three games. We look at his numbers across the board as they try to get their first Ivy League win. 
this is a big positive development, Barry, for Columbia. Well, you see the graphic right there. He helps in a lot of ways, okay? Certainly he can score. He, he takes big shots, but he, he also makes big shots, okay? He's got a bandage on his thumb right now that we see, but it's his non-shooting hand. Odenowu cannot get the roll. Davis on the attack. It's Princeton nursing a seven-point lead here. Olako kicks it out to Davis. 17 on the shot clock. He stops, he pops, he lays it in as he took advantage of a Columbia defense sleeping. Well, the Tigers doing a good job right now racking up points in the paint. And it's a 6-0 run. Can Cooper end it? Long rebound. Columbia on a scoring drought of two and a half minutes. Olako from way downtown. No foul called as Huggins and Odenowu were fighting for loose position. Well, great block out right there by Josh Odenowu. Okay, rode the man right out of the play legally. Rubio De La Rosa inside. Odenowu, a pretty dime and an even better finish. Well, we saw a great transition play right there. All started with the block out. Odenowu races right down Main Street, gets the pass, finishes strong. Rubio De La Rosa leading the team with nearly three assists per game. And that's where he can help you. It doesn't have to just be scoring, okay? He can make plays for others. Huggins grabs the offensive rebound off the Peters miss. And Princeton is back in business as we approach 11 minutes in the first half. The reset with Olako. Five on the shot clock. Peters stuck in the corner. A difficult jumper in and out. And recovered by Cooper. Rubio De La Rosa spots up. Well, that was a good time to get De La Rosa in the game right before that under 12-minute media timeout. You don't want him to sit too long if you know he's going to play. you got to see what he's got. And they've already involved him, creating for his teammates, not hesitating on the jump shot. And he'll, he'll involve himself. You know, he makes things happen. But speaking of making things happen, Rubio De La Rosa leaves it for Brown. As Princeton has missed its last four field goal attempts, Columbia just as ice cold. So the Tigers now on a scoring drought of two minutes. As they look to whip it around the perimeter. Olako to the rim, and on the scoop, he draws the foul, so he will head to the line to shoot two. And they're going to get it on Odenowu. Real, real nice ball movement by Columbia. Getting from side to side and dumping it inside for the nice finish. On the season, 80%. That is first in the Ivy League. And you see the numbers overall in the nation, fourth. Columbia is not too shabby at 12th. Now we've got two of the top free throw shooting teams in the whole country in this gym today. And sometimes it's kind of a lost art. Sometimes players don't work on it. They don't take it as serious as they should. And Olako lives up to expectations, 89% on the season. He hits both. Darius Gekwasi in the junior out of Portland, Oregon for the Tigers, replacing Olako. As Columbia goes with Rubio De La Rosa, Brown, Bedry, Cooper, and Noah Robledo in for the first time. Trying to create a spark on offense. As Rubio De La Rosa looking for his first points in his return after missing the last two games. Five on the shot clock here for Columbia. They got to put something up. Brown puts up the prayer and connects. Avery Brown dialing up long distance. And that is what you call creating something out of nothing. And now they're going to say perhaps a shot clock violation. They're going to take another look at this just to confirm whether or not he got it off in time. And that is what they're going to take a glance at. So let's take another look here. So here is Brown putting up the shot. And you don't see the light under that shot. Let's see a different angle here. He got Lee up in the air. Now based on that, it's already at zero, but hard to tell if that was in sync, Barry, with when he released the shot. 
without the light being on, it makes it very difficult. And they just confirmed that it will stand. He got it off in time. So count the trifecta for Avery Brown. And a huge bucket in terms of Columbia's offensive struggles and where they were on that possession. Well, very timely and much to the delight of this crowd. So Princeton now looking to steal back the momentum. Lee, their leading scorer on the season. The awkward floater in and out. And it's rebounded by Cooper. That's well, that a, looked like it was halfway home. It's about as far down the hoop as you can get without going through. Pedri puts up the long-range jumper. And I'm not sure if he calls bank shot, but he'll take it anyway. But the bank is open on Saturdays. So back-to-back -back threes, a 6-0 run in 33 seconds. Well, that puts the Lions right back in this. Lee thinking about a three of his own. Back out to Martini. And Thompson with his length grabs the rebound. Columbia has the numbers. Three on three now. Rubio De La Rosa out to Cooper. Bedry the offensive board. And Bedry gives it right back. Lee just has Brown to beat. Glides through the air and rolls it in. As Xavier Lee put it on a show with defense to offense in the blink of an eye. And Jim Engels wants to talk things over as we take another look. Xavier A good job capitalizing on the mistakes of Columbia. Columbia right now needs to try to play a cleaner, not turn the ball over for these last eight minutes. Especially with Princeton hitting just one field goal in its last seven attempts. This is the time to capitalize. Brown, the contested three. Lee got a piece of it. He has been everywhere on this court. And the Tigers get another defensive stop. He is certainly the X factor so far in this game, Xavier Lee. The puns just flow off your tongue. 14 on the shot clock. Lee off the pump. Slides it in the corner to Peters, and you do not want to leave that man wide open because he is their sharpshooter, knocking down his 33rd three of the season, and that leads the team. We can't leave him open. He's a knockdown shooter. You have to always know where he is, and if you can't deny him the catch, then you've got to run him off that line. This is where Lee is at his best, okay? He drives, he draws attention, he finds Peters on the other side of the court, wide open. And Peters was so critical during their run in last year's NCAA tournament. Came up with some big buckets off the bench. Now taking on even a bigger role this year. As Columbia trying to find an opening. Rubio De La Rosa slowed down by Lee, the mid-range jumper, up and in. Rubio De La Rosa on the board for the first time. Well, that's what De La Rosa needs to see, and that's also good for the Lions, okay? When you're a scorer, you need to see that ball go through the hoop. Pierce, working on Tavrock, loses the ball, turnover number five. Cooper, back the other way, blocked by Peters. And it was last touch by Peters. Barry, that was a tremendous defensive stop right underneath the bucket. Well, nice defense on both sides. Columbia forces the turnover. They take it down. Tigers come right back, and they guard and defend their basket. And that's what you have to do playing transition defense. You have to get back and almost become a hockey goalie back there. You don't want to try to stop those plays up by half court or at the three-point line. You need to get back and protect your goal, just like a hockey goalie. So you're saying that Peters pulled a Henrik Lundqvist maneuver. He kept both hands straight up and well-disciplined enough to get a piece of the ball on Cooper. 17 on the shot clock. Robledo sealed off by Scott. As Columbia down to 10 on the shot clock now. Rubio De La Rosa catches, fires. McLean going off the top of Peters, and they're going to get a foul on McLean. Well, to your point about the defense with Princeton right there, okay, when you look at the missed shot right there, you see the effort, you see the energy, 
but a good job by the men in orange just keeping guys on their back, taking up some space on blockouts. Men in Orange, is that a new spin-off film of Will Smith and Tommy Lee Jones of Men in Black? I wasn't aware that that was in production. We'll get an update a little bit later on here during the broadcast as Olako leaves it for Lee, 10 on the shot clock. Lee trying to create something, and Rubio De La Rosa ships in with a rebound. Princeton winning the battle on the glass, 13-12. Brown leaves it for Tavrov. Dangerous pass intended for McLean. Now McLean is arguing Princeton touched it last, but he's not going to win that battle. As Josh Odenowu checks in, Tavrov gets a breather. Peters will head to the bench for Princeton. It's now Martini, Pierce, Olako, Lee, and Scott, the five in for the Tigers. Well, the Lions are going to need to continue to do a good job on the glass. Usually, Lance, when you can win the battle of the boards, you can win the game. When you can control the boards, you can control the game. Long rebound bounces out of play, and it will head back to Columbia. And that was what McLean was arguing. It was hard to tell based on that angle, but he felt it was deflected off of the pass from Tavra. The officials have been put to the test today on a few calls especially with the shot clock winding down. The shot clock tips out of bounds. Brown goes reverse. Well defended by Pierce. And Princeton trying to stop the bleeding here. They've hit just two of their last 10 field goal attempts. And that is not going to help the cause. Turnover number six. Now, Barry, the problem is... As we look at Mitch Henderson making some substitutions, Columbia has not scored off of any of these turnovers. That's where they're shooting themselves in the foot a little bit. They have not been able to capitalize. But you want to give them credit, okay? They are really expending a lot of energy on defense. Right? They're trying to break up some of the rhythm. And you haven't seen Princeton make that many turnovers so far this year. Columbia's doing a good job getting him to make them. Good ball movement leads to a Robledo three. Romanelli, who just checked in, grabs an offensive board. Second chance opportunity for the Lions. They've got 10 to work with on the shot clock. Rubio De La Rosa, the step back jumper. Around the rim and out, but he was fouled by Olaco. It's gonna be number one on him. And the team second. Well, you see a nice take right there. De La Rosa reads the defense. Saw he was going to get cut off before he can get to the hoop. And shot that nice pull-up. Rubio De La Rosa first in the Ivy League at the line this season. 89%. That's 29th in the nation. We talked earlier about how great both of these teams are. Well, it's taken a while right now for Columbia to get to the free throw line and make a shot. Almost 16 minutes. As these are their first two attempts, and Rubio De La Rosa makes him count. As both teams struggling from the field, Columbia has made just one of its last seven. Princeton, two of its last ten. Yet it's a four-point game. And it's Tigers trying to add some padding here. Lee off balance jumper and he gets it to go with his momentum away from the bucket. He has such good body control when he gets to the basket. Lee, Almost like a contortionist in there. Lee now up to six points and Columbia adding to its tally as McLean knocks down the trifecta. Well, the Lions going blow to blow right now. And Princeton responding with Matt Olaco. His first made three of the day. He's got seven. It's a terrific game, Lance. Well played basketball on both ends. And Zoda Nowu working inside. And they're going to get an arm bar against... Now, they held up the number that was against Princeton. It's not on Odenohu. Instead, 
it's against Huggins, even though it looked like both teams were running the opposite way. As we take another look with both teams heading to... came over to speak about that call. That's one way to put it. You no, know, in, in, <laughs> in, in disagreement. Boy, you gave the PG version of that back and forth that occurred during the timeout. Well, it's 2.40 in the afternoon. Right. Understandable. You want to make sure we're all encompassing of the audience. McLean off balance. Peters there to collect the ball. Hey, Sam may have a lot of people watching this game. It's his birthday today. Happy 10th, Sam. Absolutely. He makes double digits <laughs> in the gym here today. We don't have a double-digit scorer yet on the court. Levo inching closer. He's got eight. And Princeton now has made its last three field goals. McLean bounces it to Odenowu, who flushes it in for a deuce. Well, that was another example right there, how Columbia, multiple players touch the ball on each possession. They're sharing the sugar. They're making it fun. They're finding the open man. That was a great finish. They have five assists on ten made field goals. Pierce creating all by himself with the baby hook. Pierce now up to nine. It's been a balanced attack for the Tigers. The six different players have scored, and Rubio De La Rosa now up to six himself. Excellent pass right there out of the high post by Odenowu. You know, De La Rosa is almost like a shark in water. He keeps moving. It's hard for your defender to stay with him. And Rubio De La Rosa with the steal. Back the other way, splits two defenders, and lays it in with the right. Oh, he's just showing off in his return to the court. Well, that's why his addition today is so big for the Lions, okay? Not just does he help you on offense, but he comes up with the steal. He comes up with the clutch rebound, makes big plays. He has active hands. And another steal, Rubio De La Rosa, out to Romanelli for three. Ring it up! And let's add that he finds open teammates. Crowd... Crowd's going crazy here, Lance. A 7-0 run for Columbia. And the Lions are right back in the middle of things. Well, the Lions have to take a page out of that Ivy home opener last year against Yale when they played so well. Peters sealed off by Odenowu. Gets it back and knocks down the three. Blake Peters had nowhere to go. And then back the other way, draws the offensive foul on Savian McLean. Well, when you talk, you see the active hands and awareness. When players get steals, okay, it's because they're active, their hands are moving, they're alert, they're anticipating, and that's everything that De La Rose is doing right now. And Roman Nelly on that jumper, his foot was on the line, so it's a two, not a three. But still a huge bucket as Princeton. Well, it's an important bucket because in transition, you don't have to play against five defenders. You're getting open. Lance, basketball is a game of advantage, disadvantage. And the defense collapsed on Rubio De La Rosa. He took advantage by kicking it out. As Princeton has about a seven-second differential between shot clock and game clock. Lee Short, Tavrov the rebound. And the Lions can hold here. Nine seconds at counting. They kick it out to Robledo for three. Well off the mark. And it goes back to Princeton. Now let's see if Columbia decides to put somebody on the ball, on the passer, so they won't throw a direct Line pass in. Rubio De La Rosa back in to replace McLean. Lee will inbound, and right now they have nobody pressuring the inbounder. Lions have to be careful. No one sneaks behind him as well. Lee trying to go for the home run here. He gets it into Alaco. Three seconds and counting. Puts up the prayer from half court. It was in line, but off the mark. And that is going to do it for the first 20 minutes of action. And quite the slugfest had been so dangerous. We talk about them leading the Ivy League with 11 made threes. They only hit four in the first half, but you make up for that with nearly 25 points in the paint. Well, the road wins are impressive, but the overall wins are impressive, okay? 
only one loss. There's only one other team in the country that only has one loss. Grand Canyon. That's it. It's just two teams in the entire country with only one loss. Well, Princeton nearly on an island all by itself, but clean short on the jumper. What we haven't seen this game is the free throw line be a big factor. We showed that graphic early. What a good free throw shooting team both teams are. And they haven't really been there yet so far this game. We'll see in the second half, especially late in the second half, if that becomes a factor. Well, speaking of free throws, Martini is going to get two opportunities here. They only attempted five in total, both teams, as McLean put up that left hand. Thought he got all ball. Well, this is not a guy you want to foul. That's because he has not missed a free throw on the season. Six of six. Last season was 86%. Exactly. McLean heading to the bench because he just picked up his third personal. That's why Rubio De La Rosa quickly back in. And Martini. Martini, He's able to take full advantage. Martini shows his shooting form right there. For a big man, he has a nice touch. He comes from a great program in New Jersey. Gil St. Bernard, Mergen Cena does an outstanding job there. I've watched that program for a few years. He could make a good player, okay, great. He makes average players good, and he could turn good players great. Odenowu kicks it out to Thompson. Good luck for three. Round the rim and out. And Pierce there for the rebound. Gated Pierce with nine points and four rebounds. Had a very fast start to this game. Since then, it's been the balanced attack. Nine on the shot clock for Alaco. Five to work with. Difficult fadeaway jumper. And Brown is there for the rebound. Brown doing a good job not leaking out, making the defensive board a priority on that play. Rubio De La Rosa sneaks underneath and extends the right hand for the lane. And this is where even though you have a foul on McLean and he comes out, maybe it helps you getting De La Rosa back in there a little bit quicker this second half. Because they had waited in the first half and he answered the call. Lee keeps his dribble alive. Well, sometimes as a coach, you're wondering when do you make that move, what the decision is. Well, your player just made the move for you. And the hand does not bother him either. Pierce with the left hand, and he finds a way to leap over this Columbia defense. So Pierce now in double figures for the fourth straight game. Now he's trying to make it four straight double-doubles. Thompson dials up from beyond the arc. And Columbia is back within four. Well, Thompson picking up the start of this second half like he did in the first half. That's Thompson's second three. He's up to eight points. Princeton trying to create off the back door. Lee gets a screen from Pierce and then whips it over to Peters. Fadeaway three. Thompson with Pierce. It was last touch by Pierce. It heads back to Columbia. Well, if you really take a deep dive into the Columbia defense that play, they did a good job not getting beat on backdoor cuts. And then they forced Peters into taking it off the bounce instead of the straight catch and shoot. Three minutes into the second half. Rubio De La Rosa back to Odenohu. Cross court to Thompson. The extra pass to Brown. And Columbia just cannot get it to roll in. Lee back the other way to Martini, and Martini will earn another trip to the line as he's two for two for today. A really good ball movement on one side of the board by Columbia. Okay, stretch, stretching the defense out. Okay, but Lee once again just leads that break and gets his horses running down court full speed. That was the third against Odenowu. Jake Tavroff has jumped off the bench. And Martini is perfect three for three. And Odenowu is going to join Xavier McLean as each of them have three personals. Well, if you're one of the Tiger teammates and you see Lee with the ball, you're sprinting down court because you know if he gets picked up and you're open, you're going to get the ball. And the first miss for Princeton as well as Martini on the season. 
So he start off the year eight of eight. Tavrov calling for it in Lee great hands to knock it away. Tavrov off the dribble and a double dribble against him. Turnover number eight. Clearly gave up his dribble and then continued it. Lions averaged 12 turnovers a game. That's fourth in the Ivy League. Speaking of that, there's another one for Princeton. And the Lions off to the races. Rubio De La Rosa sealed off. So Columbia will reset. Tavrov gets past Martini. Out to Rubio De La Rosa for three. And the Lions continue to storm back within two with just over 15 minutes to go. And they continue to move the ball around, find open men, play side to side for good shots. Thompson getting down and dirty with Pierce. Pierce last touched it, and it will head back to the Lions. And with that, a stoppage of play. Tavrov creating inside-outside game. Columbia knocking down its 6-3. Down by two. An X factor of their own today, and it's De La Rosa who comes off the bench. Like when you're coaching and you're looking at your opponent, you're, you're trying to prepare, and if you don't know if someone's gonna play, De La Rosa, they didn't know if he was gonna play today. Columbia has yet to lead in this game. Closest it's been is 2-2. Tavrov, the handoff to Rubio De La Rosa. Out to Brown, and Avery Brown was called for a travel there. Mitch Henderson campaigning heavily, and that battle he won. Well, the officiating crew got the call right. It wasn't called by the ref closest to the ball, but he could have been watching something else in the low post. But the ref on the other side did get it right when he saw it. Lions now up to nine turnovers. Princeton trying to cash in. Paulaco can't get the bounce. Tavrov the rebound. Jake Tavrov doing a nice job on the boards. Thompson to give Columbia a lead. Block, though, on the release. Tigers are doing an excellent job today, Lance, contesting shots. We saw Lee block Thompson earlier in the game, and that set up a transition bucket. Lee can't capitalize. Princeton on a scoring drought of over two minutes. They've missed their last four shots. Nolan for three. Pierce the rebound. He's up to five boards. Lee back to Pierce, rewarded underneath on the offensive end. Well, a real nice pick and roll play right there. Tigers can hurt you both ways because they have the ability to pop. On that time, they saw no defender tagging the roller, and they went to the rim. Brown off the dribble with the right hand. Beats Princeton's defense to the spot. They're back within two. Good, strong, fast, physical drive right there. Lions needed a high percentage shot, and they got one. And it's Brown and Nolan that have done all the heavy lifting in Rubio De La Rosa's absence. Lee too hard off the glass. Tavrov the rebound. And Columbia again with an opportunity to take its first lead. Nolan is yet to score in this game. He had a career high 17 in the loss at Yale on Monday. Brown pulls up. And Scott there for the rebound. Polacco orchestrating traffic. And Lee stepped out of play, giving the ball back to Columbia. Turnover number 10. Uncharacteristic turnover right there. You know, you've seen some of those calls a little more often this year in college basketball. Referees noticing those feet on the sideline, just sometimes an inch out of bounds. It's all about the geography of the court. Columbia has now scored nine points off of the Princeton mishaps, and Mitch Henderson's going to make one more substitution. Jacob Huggins is going to check in. 
He'll give Martini a breather. So you now have Davis, Huggins, Pierce, Scott, and Alaco, the five in. Tavroff, Rubio, De La Rosa, Nolan, Thompson, and Brown. Round out the five for Columbia. Twenty on the shot clock. They go inside to Rubio De La Rosa, trying to solve Olaco, and he can't get the roll. Follows his own miss. Still at the rim, and this time it rolls in, plus the foul, with an opportunity to give Columbia its first lead. What a play right there by De La Rosa. Okay, he goes inside the land of the bigs. Okay, just doesn't get it to fall, but stays with it. Hard-nosed, tough, gritty, aggressive, and finishes strong in there. Scott gets charged with the personal. Rubio De La Rosa, 89%. Number one in the Ivy League. He's two for two today. This could be the first lead of the day for the line. And just as we set him up, Rubio De La Rosa, a rare miss. Well, you know, when you're playing chess, you always want to have your most important pieces on the board, your kings, your queens, your rooks. Same thing in basketball. You need to have your best pieces out there. Avery Brown called for a foul defending Blake Peters. That's number one on Brown, the team's third. Noah Robledo back in. Thompson takes a seat for Columbia. Tigers have won eight in a row against the Lions. Seven of those eight games have been decided by double figures. So this is a very rare occurrence for it to be a highly contested game between these two. You've got to love the energy and intensity of both of these teams today. And you've got to love the range from Blake Peters. He's in double figures with... Check that. No, he is in double figures with 12 thanks to that three. And it's a three-point cushion out for Princeton. Peters just shows you his great ability to shoot the basketball. He gets his feet set. Nolan trying to stuff it into Tavroff. We're going to get a quick ball. And with that, timeout on the floor. It'll be Columbia basketball when we return, but it's Princeton untying the second half. And just as he's done all season long, he is contributing in so many different areas. There's Rubio De La Rosa. Keeping Columbia in this one down by three. Off the inbounds, tried to get it back to Brown and another turnover. That's number 10 for Columbia. So each team with 10 in this contest. And you see the Lions continue to pick up the ball early in the backcourt right there. Just not wanting to get any rhythm with these Tigers. Some movement without the ball for Princeton. Peters in a three on the last possession. They go inside to Pierce, eight on the shot clock. Kicks it in the corner to Davis. Martini had a hand on it. Nolan comes to the rescue. And the Lions have an opportunity to inch closer. Robledo left all alone. And you can tie the game at 47. Great job right there for Columbia. Moving the ball side to side, getting it back on the other side. The wins are on the other side of the court. When you reverse the ball, you can find yourself with open space to shoot. Olaco pulls up and knocks down the 15-footer to quickly give Princeton back the lead. Well, when you hear the way the coaches and his teammates speak about Matt Olaco, you know why. There's such a good leader out there. And he's so smooth in creating his own shot. Robledo goes up inside. And Noland is going to be able to save this with 20 on the shot clock. Tried to get it inside to Brown. Intercepted by Olaco. And Olaco back the other way. It's going to be an offensive foul. As it's Noah Robledo right underneath the buckets. Well, good job right there. Good job right there by Columbia getting back. Robledo picks him up right in the paint. 
sacrifices his body for the good of the team, gets his team an extra possession right here, and we'll see what they do with it. Second on Alaco. Columbia going to their bench a lot today. Robbie Stanker now in for the first time. Hands off to Rubio De La Rosa with 15 on the shot clock. Robledo hit a three earlier. He's going to stay on one as Martini grabs the rebound. The battle on the glass even at 25. In a two-point game. Pierce with one hand as he was held on to is going to earn a trip at the line as they get Robledo with his first personal and that is number four on the team. And even though people think of, bas of, bas of basketball is a game of size, the defender has to get low. Real nice job there offensively sizing up the defender when he saw he wasn't low he decided to take him off the drive. Pierce is a 67% free throw shooter. He is two for two today. The sophomore out of Illinois stays perfect. Princeton has a lot of Illinois players on the roster. Do a good job recruiting there. And yeah, this is gonna go the opposite way. Robledo pushing off down low in the paint. That'll be his second. You know, I believe one of their all-time greats, Craig uh, Robinson from Illinois. The president of the our... brother-in-law. The president of our National Association of Basketball Coaches. And then the other president who I thought you were going to refer to. <laughs> <laughs> hey, brother-in-law We're talking about Barack the president Obama. of the National Coaches Association. <laughs> Doing a great job for us. Basketball is by far the bigger priority here in the booth. Understandable. Lee stops underneath. And he draws yet another foul against Columbia. So more free throws coming for the Tigers. Kenny Nolan picking up his third. And here's another look. Well, you see right now Princeton trying to go to that trademark backdoor play right there. The timing was good. The pass was right on target, nice and low for the cutter to receive it. Lee comes in 86%. He's second in the Ivy League right behind Rubio De La Rosa. McLean back in for Columbia. Nolan heads to the bench. Well, you, you know, last year was such an outstanding season for the Tigers. And some of these underclassmen who were in a supporting role are now becoming leading men. Lee, Peters, you name it speaks volumes of the depth of this Princeton team. And they lost Tosan Awoma, one of the best players in the Ivy League, who is now with the Detroit Pistons G League affiliate. You may go watch them play on Tuesday night. They're coming here to uh, play the next G League team. Rubio De La Rosa from way downtown. Lead the rebound. Gets it up ahead to Olaco. And they'll wisely reset here. It's a 6-0 run for Prince in a scoring drought over two minutes for Columbia. Lee slashing, and Lee getting it to roll in. He's up to 12. And that's really, where really hurts you, okay? The ball's on a string. He keeps it nice and tight. And with that, a timeout on the floor. Xavier Lee gets a step on McLean over Thompson. La Rosa, leading scorer for Columbia, coming off the bench in this game with 15. After missing the last two games with a hand injury, Princeton has three players in double figures scoring. And Xavier Lee with a dribble drive on the last possession right before the timeout. It is an 8-0 run for Princeton. Columbia has not scored in two minutes and 20 seconds. Well, Princeton comes out in his zone right now. We'll see if they switch back from man to man. Brown like working on Pierce. Leans in and banks it in. So the zone did not fluster them out of the timeout. Well, the thing that Columbia needs to continue to do is move the ball around. They have 11 assists. Should have 11 or 10 assists on 19, 20 made baskets. They're really sharing the ball well. 
Davis pulls up from the baseline, and he now adds to the tally off the bench. Because Princeton has always had an answer to anything Columbia throws its way. And Brown is bumped by Davis out on the perimeter. That'll be number one on Davis. And with that, another timeout here on the floor. We'll step aside. Lone here in the second half, Columbia just won. Well, it really helps when you can get to the free throw line. Not just do you have an uncontested shot, but on a made one, it gives you a chance to go back and set up your defense. That's really where it helps. Other teams can't get out in transition. You can play defense with five defenders. And they're going to get a blocking foul on Martini as Odenowu spun to the bucket. You see a nice drive right here. If you're Josh Odenowu, you just want to play through any contact and finish strong at the rim. He's really an inside force that Columbia has and you want to use. So Martini picks up his first. Initially, they signaled 11 with the foul. That's why Princeton's bench was arguing and they've now clarified that at the scorer's table. So it will stay with Columbia here with 20 on the shot clock. McLean in foul trouble, trying to contribute on the offensive end. As Columbia is 7 of 24 from beyond the arc, shooting just 29%. A nice play right there. Inbound, it came was wide open for a quick three, which was open and uncontested. Ten on the shot clock for Princeton. Pierce one on one on Thompson, spinning left to right. Odenowu the rebound. Rubio De La Rosa off the pump. Gets closer to the rim with the left hand. Rubio De La Rosa 17. And that is a smile worth honing in on. Well, that shot fake right there set the whole play up. Created a whole avenue for him to drive and get to the hoop. And Mitch Anderson wants to talk things over with Columbia. Cutting the deficit to six. All Rubio De La Rosa. When you look on the catch right now, he sees the defender flop. Okay, you love to see what's going on today. De La Rosa has done a real good job coming back from this layoff and making this contribution. It's Lee Peters, Martini, Pierce, and Alaco, the five in for Princeton. Ten on the clock. They kick it in the corner to Peters, and Peters drains it. Blake Peters has been red hot from downtown. He's got 15. Well, that was a good time out there by Princeton. Okay, just wanted to get organized, gave him a chance to set up a play. But Peters has matched his career high with five made threes. Odenowu backing into Lee, out to Brown. Brown through the towers and a ring around the Rosie to make it a seven point game. As Jim Engels wants to talk things over. Opportunity for both teams to get. Well, Columbia is still keeping themselves in striking distance and giving them a puncher's chance. The only time during recent history in which Columbia kept things close and ran away with things was a game several years ago as Pierce misses the lay-in attempt when Princeton was coming off a triple overtime affair against Cornell, lost that game, drove through the night to New York City, and then Columbia, Columbia with cruise control, cruise past them. You see right now, taking your time, seeing where the defender is, okay? Columbia right now has to have five guys in the paint, crashing that board, not giving up any second chance opportunities if they want to continue to give themselves a chance to win this game. Thompson picking up his first, Pierce is three for three at the line, and he is going to earn another off the front end of the one and one. That was the 17th foul against Columbia. That game that I was referencing was 
in February of 2017, an 85-60 win for Columbia. That snapped another eight-game skid for the Tigers. Brown on the attack, loses the ball. Jim Engels wanted a foul called against Princeton. And instead, it's going to be a foul against Columbia. Avery Brown picking it up. That's number two on him and the team's eighth. So yet another one and one opportunity coming up here. And this time it's Blake Peters. One of those bang bang plays where the coach sees, you know, what he thinks is a foul, aggressive, going to the hoop, and then when you don't get the call, and then when the whistle turns the other way, that's where some real discomfort sets in. And Peters with the miss, an 83% free throw shooter. McLean working on Peters, spinning. And at the rim, banking it in, plus the foul. Xavier McLean fighting off foul trouble to try to keep Columbia within striking distance. McLean does a great job right now, spinning, twisting, turning, using his upper body strength to finish at the rim. McLean up to seven points. He's 81% on the season. We're on Broadway, and that was like a ballet right there, what he did with his footwork. A six-point game with under five and a half. Pierce packing up on Thompson. And Lee will regroup here with 11 on the shot clock. McLean all over him. Now Thompson comes over on the switch. Six on the shot clock. Pierce on McLean, cannot lay it in. And Columbia with an opportunity to get closer with Rubio De La Rosa drawing the foul against the Tigers. They're gonna get it on Peters. Well, that all started on the defensive end with a good rebound, securing it tightly, and then pushing the ball up court in transition, beating the Tigers' defense back. Number two on Peters, the team six. Columbia has only attempted two free throws here in the second half. Six on the game. Thompson sealed off with 18 on the shot clock. Brown finds an opening, slips through, blocked by Pierce, who came over on the help side. Pierce does a terrific job right there, coming over from the help side to get that block. We see so many of their blocks today were one-on-one. -on -one. This was a help side one. Lee tried to force it. Rubio De La Rosa lets it fly. Odeno the rebound. Back to Rubio De La Rosa with the right hand, cashes it in, and Columbia is within four. The long shots mean long rebounds. The Lions. Stayed with that, got a long rebound, gave it back to their hot hand. You like what De La Rosa did. He didn't settle for another shot. He attacked the rim. Rubio De La Rosa has matched his season high with 19. Pierce with McLean defending, and it makes no difference as Pierce now is up to 19 himself. Pierce missed the inside, missed the outside. Speaking of inside, Blair Thompson answers the call. It stays a four-point game. Well, this is where, if you're Columbia, you can't trade baskets anymore. And Princeton pulls a timeout with 3.28 to go. They are on their feet here inside Levy and Jim. Ball movement. McLean to Thompson. A four attempts. It's Princeton basketball out of the timeout. We've seen some brilliant offense by both of these teams today. We've seen excellent ball movement. We've seen spacing on the floor. We've seen screening, cutting. And also some great individual execution. 10 on the shot clock. Pierce, one-on-one -on, -one on Brown. And contact underneath. 
as Brown got a piece of Pierce's arm. It's gonna be number three on Brown. It's the team's ninth. So set up a one and one here for Caden Pierce, who is five of five today. One of the things you like about Columbia's defense is I believe in the last two games, they gave up more than what their opponents were averaging. We look at Columbia with four players, three personals. Princeton has no one that meets that criteria. And Pierce is not gonna earn another. In, in today's game, Princeton came in, believe, averaging 78 points a game. They may not hit that today, and that's one of the reasons why the Lions have a chance to win this game. Well, both teams well below their average is Columbia nearly 81 a game. They're at 60 right now. Princeton does have the best scoring defense in the Ivy League. They give up 63 a game. And McLean cannot get it to fall through. And they have had so many of those in this contest. Doing a good job attacking the rim. Just have to get it to fall. Two and a half to go. The defending Ivy League champs getting every which fight from Columbia. Lee digging deep into his arsenal of tricks and putting on a three-ring circus down at the rim. Well, you have to give Lee some credit right there. He had the taller defender on him in Thompson, but he knew how to use his shot fakes to get to the rim and get that off. Thompson fakes right, dribbles left. McLean puts up the three. And the unfriendly rims here at Levian continue to show their true colors. You know what, Lance? Good guards. They know how to change hands. They know how to change speeds. They know how to change directions. Xavier Lee does all of them. Caden Pierce with his 10th rebound. That's four straight double-doubles. And that's his eighth of the season. Lee trying to create. Spots up for three. Rubio De La Rosa the rebound. And Princeton did a great job getting back on defense to stop the transition. Brown short with the left hand. Pierce another rebound. And Princeton looks to milk some clock. Another shot at the rim. The Lions just couldn't get to drop. The Lions are on a scoring drought of 220. Timing is everything. And not cooperating in favor of Columbia. Olako at seven on the shot clock. Races to the rim, lays it in. And that may have been an early exclamation point. Olako might have got hurt on that play. Odenowu working on Martini with the right hand. Another shot short at the rim. And that's a turnover on Princeton. Olako could not save it. So we'll stay with Columbia here. Well, Laco does a good job getting to the rim, but on the landing right there, it looks like he may have tweaked his ankle or knee. Well, he's still staying in the game as he's defending Rubio De La Rosa in the left corner. Well, he's not coming out. Even if Mitch Henderson takes him out, he's not coming out. One turnover leads to another. And Olako walking over to Mitch Henderson and telling him that everything is going to be okay as Avery Brown heads to the pick, gave the ball right back. That was their 14th turnover. So full court press being showcased here as Davis will inbound. Rubio De La Rosa with Olaco. Now did it go off Olaco? And it did. A turnover on Princeton and Columbia right now is Chile is going to be upheld they saw what we saw in the last replay Barry that after it hit Rubio De La Rosa's knee apparently went off the fingertip of Alaka well you know what credit the Lions right there for playing good defense Rubio De La Rosa the three Davis the rebound and they're going to head up court with Pierce, who puts the finishing touches on the road on another impressive victory. Brown with a clear path to the rim. 
Caden Pierce with 21 points to lead the way for the Tigers with his fourth straight double-double. And it is now nine consecutive wins over Columbia for Princeton as they improve to 15-1. and one.